When you download the Bakers app, you have easy access to savings every day. Get the most out of weekly sales and receive personalized coupons to save on your favorite items, all while earning one fuel point for every dollar spent. Bakers makes it easy to save while you shop, whether it's in-store or online, so you get the most value out of every trip, every time. Download the Bakers app now to save big on your next purchase. Bakers, fresh for everyone. Must have a digital account to redeem offers. Restrictions may apply. See site for details. Welcome to Bite Size Bios. This is meant to be a mini-sode that will accompany HGTH. Every week, I will pick a person from history and dive into their lives. All right, and welcome back to another episode of Bite Size Bios BSB. This is, of course, the mini soda accompaniment to How Did That Happen? Uh, this is episode number 30, I do believe. We are chugging right along here. This is, it's, it's, it's wild that this in itself is episode 30. This is just something that I kind of just created in my head uh, so like six months ago. No, my like, gosh, eight months ago. I thought, let me just do some bios on a mini soda in between my show. And we'll see how it goes. And we are literally, uh, we're, we're, this is our 30th person. Uh, and I do want to, I want to say, I guess in, because it's pride month, I don't, you know, want to be that guy. It's, you know, I'm, I've always been supportive or whatever, but uh, we do have some episodes that are cover people who have specifically been through that journey. Uh, I think we just recently, we just did Caitlyn Jenner on her history. Uh, I've done uh, Ellen DeGeneres. Uh, I can't remember if there's any others, but I thought about those two. I thought people, because people don't always know all the people that we cover here on this uh, podcast, but I would say definitely go check that out in honor of pride or if you just want to find out something interesting because they both have lived lives. Um, but of course, because this is the mini episode to the actual podcast, we have to go back before we can go forward and, um, talk about our last episode, which was on the transatlantic slave trade, which was of course the longest, how did that happen on record? I think it was like 58, 59 minutes. And it was just so, there was so much information, so dense, so saturated that, I mean, of course things, things were left off. If you went to the, 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 the website, there's more, um, well, I'm not, I'm not even sure what I wanted because I feel like honestly that. There, we, we covered it. I feel like there's not much to really else to be said about that specific topic. I think there will be a slavery episode later. That's why I didn't go into like American slavery or North American slavery or New World slavery too much more than just how did they get there? How did this occur? What what led to what we learned was the largest like movement of like any specific type of people in hum, human history. I almost said humanic history. It's not a thing, but I just felt right for a second. But I'm just, full disclosure. Um, but I thought, yeah, good, good app. We learned about slave ships. Like I said, go check out that, um, that show. Uh, it's a documentary on Netflix called, I think it's called Descendants or The Descendants. And it, it is about the last slave ship that ever came to America and like just the, the reverberations, just the, the things that, can, that, that came from that ship. Um, it's worth a documentary. It is. It is worth, it was, it's worth a watch. Let's see. Is there anything else I really wanted? I mean, I, you know, I don't know. Like, I, there's, there's, there's good slave movies out there, but I don't feel like it's worth mentioning now because it wasn't, like I said, this was more about the actual transportation, not the actual, uh, like, the, 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 the slavery itself. Uh, that will be covered at a later date, not, like, anytime soon. Uh, it's just, you know, going to be down the pike. Let's see. But, yeah, uh, what am I watching? I, guys, I have been watching a ridiculous amount of Harry Potter. Um, just a... Just, 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 um, just, just ridiculous. I can't, I can't even give you another adjective because that's just the one that keeps coming to mind. I've seen, I think, all of them now. Again, I mean, I've seen them all before, but I'm like, they're on the rewatch mode. Like in the last week, I've seen all of them. And like, as an adult with a life, that's hard to fit like multiple, like seven to eight, two and a half hour movies into your day. Um, but I'm doing it. Look at me. Look at me, mom. I'm doing it. Um, and I just, I love it because I grew up. That's what I'm realizing. I didn't because I've never been a big Lord of the Rings guy. Or really even if that big of a Star Wars guy, like I like it. I like it. Like I do enjoy it. But I never felt how I feel other people feel about those shows. But when I when our movies, when I watch, uh, but when I watch Harry Potter, it takes me back because I was that generation. I was the gener I was the Harry Potter kid. I was reading Harry Potter in when the third grade. You know what I mean? When it came out. When like when because I remember thinking about that. Like there's so many things, so many things that we know now about the universe. She was still creating, J.K. Rowling was still creating the universe at that time. So we didn't have, when I was growing up, all the stuff that you know about Harry Potter now, all this prequel of who Dumbledore was and how he may have felt sexually or whatever. You know what I mean? Like there's so much to just take in now. And because it's, it does remind me, remind me of my childhood in, in a very, um, 
I would say impactful way. It's, it's, it's been it's been cathartic. I would say to watch this stuff. So I've been watching a lot of Harry Potter. I uh, wouldn't recommend it if you don't like it. But if you love it, go check it out for sure. Um, haven't been listening to anything really besides just all the regular podcasts that I do normally listen to. I don't have anything new out there that I'm that I'm that I'm bringing in. Also, I get to lie. I, I, the last podcast I listened to was called um, Angry Therapist. Yeah, and I forget the guy's name. Hold on, let me find it. Let me get it. I don't want to be that guy. You know, it was like, oh, this is a wreck, but not a full wreck. Because it kind of just came up um, on my feed. You know, like one of those, uh, if you like this, you'll like that too. And um, I've listened to a couple. I don't know if he's going to be a regular part of my rotation, but I've listened to a few episodes. Okay, yeah, the angry therapist. What's his name, though? He's called John. Come on. John Kim. There we go. So the angry therapist with John Kim. Uh, it's just an interesting... If you're trying to work through some stuff mentally, and aren't we all, you know, it's, it's, uh, check it out. So, yeah, I don't, don't know if there's much else to say before we get started here. Um, yeah, I do think, I do think that we're going to start to look at some different people, though. Um, I've been thinking about that. I have some people, because I, I was, you know, they, and I, that's what this whole all is about. I want to just pick people from history and just, just, you know, let's just find out about them. You know, let's just see, see what's up a little bit. What's going on? What's, what's, what's behind that curtain? And I would think we've done, we've done a lot. I mean, in 30 people, we've done, we've done uh, numerous first wives, or uh, first ladies. We've done um, all people of all different races and genders uh, and you know, of all different time periods. So I, I want to start messing around with some time periods. I want to start looking at other times and see if we can start doing some bios. I've been seeing some people in history, or I've been seeing people pop up in like my Twitter feeds and stuff. And I'm like, oh, I never knew about them. I know nothing about them. And let's, let's find out. Let's dive in. And so that's, that's what this pod is about always. Uh, like I said, every other week we will find somebody from history and dive into their lives. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we do, as always, uh, you can like and subscribe wherever you're finding this pod. Give us five stars if you want to and give us two stars if you didn't want to and tell us why you didn't want to because constructive criticism is always what it is welcome. Thank you. You can go to the website over at httappen.com to find all the extras uh, that you won't that you won't hear here. And I don't think there's much else to say besides that. I just wanted to get that in before we go ahead and get the episode. So thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and... Um, Without further ado, as we know to do, here is the episode. Ray, people will come, Ray. They'll come to Iowa for reasons they can't even fathom. They'll turn up your driveway, not knowing for sure why they're doing it. They'll arrive at your door, as innocent as children, longing for the past. Of course, We won't mind if you look around, you'll say. It's only $20 per person. They'll pass over the money without even thinking about it. For it is money they have, and peace they like. Okay, so we are here today to talk about James Earl Jones. First off, good name. Um, We're going to learn a lot about him. I think the quote that we just, or the uh, the clip that was just played was um, was from the movie Field of Dreams. Uh, just an inspiring, you know, I might, I might start playing that every morning when I get up, just, you know, he just, he really pulled it like it is, uh, pull yourself up by your bootstraps sort of, you know, thought process, but we will jump into the life that is James Earl Jones. He was born in Arca Butler, Mississippi. And I must say that's probably like top five, top 10 words I've heard in the last couple months. Arca Butler. It's just fun to say Arca Butler on January 17, 1931, uh, to Ruth, Connolly, and she was a teacher and a maid, and his father's name was Robert Earl Jones. Uh, he was a boxer, a butler, and a chauffeur. I even uh, think I have here that he would go on to do a little stage acting himself, and which is why he was not in uh, young J.E.J.'s life growing up. I think by the age of five, he was gone, um, and probably they, don't, they, they wouldn't reconcile for about another 20, 20 or some odd years. Like I think, yeah, Jones and his father did not Get to know each other until the 1950s when they reconciled. He has said in interviews that his parents were both of African American, Irish, and Native American ancestry. There are pictures that will be on the Twitter or excuse me, the the, uh, the website, and you can see his family. I mean, his family is they're very very light. They don't even really look black, if that makes any sense. I they, they you know I mean all they're also black and white pictures. Who who knows what you can really get from this stuff? Um, but like his, his grandparents and and they they look like Native Americans almost. Um. So Jones uh, would end up moving uh, with his family to his grandparents' farm in Michigan, uh, part of the uh, Great Migration, which we've mentioned uh, numerous times on these Bite Size bios. I think there was, um, who was I think, Viola Davis. 
her family also left in the Great Migration. Uh, who else? We had, some, we had a couple other people that were also involved in that. It's, it's, it's a really, and I've mentioned it before, it's a really great part of history to study. Um, if you're into history, it's only about 70 years ago. Uh, but it is, it is how um, basically America got the rest of, got black people in the rest of its states. You know, not that that's a, that's a very, very broad stroke way of putting it, but it's like the people in Chicago right now are descendants of Southern people. You know what I mean? And, and they're, they're, not, they're only a couple generations off, but I digress. Uh, so yeah, he would move to um, Jackson, Michigan, Jackson, Michigan, and live on his uh, grandfather's farm. And he found the transition so difficult that he actually would develop a stutter, uh, a stutter so severe that he refused to speak. Man would say nothing. Um, he's here quoted, I believe, to say, I was a stutterer. I couldn't talk. So my first year of school was my first mute year. And then those mute years continued, continued until I got to high school, end quote. This man didn't talk throughout school, but became known for his voice all over the world. Can we just pause for a moment and think about that? I mean, think about that. How many people would have thought? Or how many people have, have taken that, that path, that journey? Uh, not many. Not many, I would, I, would, I would imagine. I mean, I, can, I can't imagine not talking for like 10 years. That's crazy. I mean, not crazy, because people do it. And I could probably, I could probably benefit from, less, from me talking less. I've, I've learned that in my life. Um, yeah, my words, you know, I could, I could say a few less things. But the idea that he was mute from what he said, his first year of school till high school. I mean, that's, what is that? I mean, at least like eight years. And he really didn't start to talk or, well, I guess by his words, but he credits his English teacher, Donald Crouch, um, who, uh, who discovered that he had a gift for writing poetry uh, with helping him end his silence. And he urged him to um, speak, you know, to read his poetry. And I, I was watching a video and, um, about James Earl Jones and this, this specific scene um, and they were talking about how, oh, this is, you know, his teacher was like, oh, you wrote that? Prove to me you wrote it. Read it out loud. And I'm like, how is that proof that he wrote it? I can recite Drake's albums. I didn't write that. I don't know. It's just like, what kind of thought process? I'm, I'm glad it happened because we wouldn't have Darth Vader. Um, and there are some funny videos out there of, of, of watching the dude who plays Darth Vader in the, in the suit, like the outtakes of him talking uh, while he's in the in it, It's not. It's just imagine. We, we, we were all, he, he blessed us all with that, with that voice. Um, so in 1949, uh, Jones would graduate from Dixon Rural Ag Agricultural School, which they have now shortened to just Brethren High School in Brethren, Michigan. I mean, when, 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 when did that happen? Why did they need such crazy long names? It's like, the, 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 they probably taught the same thing, but back then it had to be Dixon Rural Agricultural School. Now it's just Brethren High School because it was in Brethren, Michigan. That's not a far reach. That should have been probably what it was called the entire time. Uh, but during that time when he went to that, to that school, he was vice president of the class, I think his senior year. Um, once he left there, he would go on to uh, the University of Michigan, where he was initially pre-med. Uh, he would find out later on that medicine was not for him. Uh, but while he was there, he joined the ROTC, uh, Reserve Officer Training Corps, and excelled there. He felt comfortable within the structure of the military environment and enjoyed the camaraderie of his fellow cadets. Um, let's see, during his course of studies, like I said, he found out he wasn't going to be a doctor. Ended up switching from that to the School of Music, Theater, and Dance. Uh, and he would actually end up not getting his degree. He left, because I, I have here that he graduated, but I, I read in other articles that he didn't. I read in other, but I mean, you would imagine he probably would have had to, or else you can't, because you can't just leave ROTC and go, I mean, well, who knows? Things were different back then. And we'll find that this was uh, during wartime, so they could have bent a couple of rules. So this man, uh, James Earl Jones, or I call him J-E-J, -E -J, or Jedj for short, he would end up being an army ranger. Who knew, right? Uh, and so with the war intensifying in Korea, Jones was expected to be deployed as soon as he received his commission as a second lieutenant. Um, but he wouldn't actually go over there. He wouldn't, while, and while he was waiting, he um, would do theater in Michigan, uh, the Ramsdale Theater. Uh, he was commissioned in mid-1953 after the Korean War's end uh, and reported to Fort Benning uh, to then become uh, an officer. And after that, he attended ranger school, and then he uh, got his ranger tab. And what he actually did, he would end up go and he would be, he would be stationed in Colorado for a little bit. Um, I think it was about, I don't have his full military service. He got out not long after that. He wasn't there for very long. So there's not much to know, I guess, as far as like how long he was in there. But who knew? There's a freaking, he's an army ranger, man. I mean, that's, that's, it's almost like finding out, I don't know, like that uh, Morgan Freeman was a Navy SEAL or something. Like, you know, I don't know. Um, so, but after, or after the army, uh, he moved to New York where he studied at the American Theater Wing. Uh, and worked as a janitor while doing that just to support himself. And this is all, this man is, this is how old he is. This is all happening in the 50s, just, to, just, for, just for a time placement, just to kind of ground us and let us know where we're at right now. In 1957, he made his Broadway debut uh, as understudy to Lloyd Richards in the short-lived play The Egghead by Molly Kazan. Uh, the play only ran for 21 performances. 
he would end up then going on to play the role of Edward the Butler in Sunrise at Campo Bello. It's fun just to read these sometimes in 1958. Um, he got his big, I would say this is probably his biggest break at the, up until this moment in the, in the timeline uh, in 67 when he starred alongside Jane Alexander in Howard Sackler's play The Great White Hope, um, the arena stage in Washington, D.C. And this was also, this play was based off of Jack Johnson, um, a very famous, famous boxer, not during that time, I think, but probably about 20 or 30 years before then. He played the, the the guy was named Jack Jefferson though, you know, not not a, not a far uh, stretch from that guy's actual name. So the play was a huge success. It would, it would eventually come to Broadway. Um, it received the Pulitzer Prize. This is when Jones would win his uh, Tony, which he has, and I think what we mentioned in the last one, he has what's called the Actors Triple Crown, where he doesn't have a Grammy. He just, but he has an Emmy, a Oscar, and a Tony. I think is I, I believe that to be true. Um, I think so. Uh, but what another interesting nugget about this guy's life? I mean, you just we we know look we know we know we we know he's he's Mufasa, right? We know that, right? We know that he is Darth Vader. We know that, and I think I'll play a clip from from Darth Vader just to, just so you can hear it. If you because if you don't know because there, there's some people have never crossed crossed it. Man, this this guy's voice is like velvet. Um, but he we we, we know that he's, we know he's Darth Vader. We know he was the old he he played the old black guy in a lot of movies like Field of Dreams, Sandlot. You know, just to name a few. Um, but what we don't know, what I didn't know, what really blew my mind when it came across my desk when I was doing the research this week, what I didn't know is that this, in 1969, he participated in the, in the test films for Sesame Street. He was, if not, he was in the, the ground floor, the beginning of Sesame Street. What he did is he, like I said, they made the test film. So he, was, he starred in the, 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 the videos that they would make to show children and see their reaction to see, okay, is it worth making a children's show? Like, is, can they, you know, is, is this content, you know, worth it? Does this kid react to it? Like, how, let's, let's just try this out. They were looking at a young James Earl Jones who was just like in a blank room, just like re, like counting to 10, like, I, like one, two, three, I, you know what I mean? Like, I am your father, four, five, like, I don't know, you know what I mean? But like this, and it's noted in the, in the, in the production notes, um, like I just, he, he was there. He like, yeah, they said he was, uh, a bald-headed man who was counting slowly to ten, and they—I mean—they watch that, and from that we get the Cookie Monster, um, in not so many words. But so yeah, he was on the ground floor of Sesame Street. Who knew? He would get his um, his debut role of um, Darth Vader in 1977, and of course George Lucas's space opera blockbuster film Star Wars: A New Hope. Um, and he would actually be in there for the next two movies, and he was actually uncredited. For the first two movies, because he has to be, I don't know, he's just a, maybe it's a weird theater thing, theater thing. But then he was actually credited in the in the next one, and I think on all the uh, the redubbings and the remix thing that they made in, in the coming years. You have failed me for the last time, Admiral Captain Piet. Yes, my lord. Make ready to land our troops beyond their energy field and deploy the fleet so that nothing gets off the system. You are in command now, Admiral Piet. And I actually have here, it's kind of crazy, I'm, I, didn't, I didn't even realize that I had this in my notes, because I, I do I use this stuff, uh, I do so much of it, that I don't always remember every of the little nuggets here, but I do have the actual reason, I think, why they didn't use Darth, the actual ca character actor, uh, Darth Vader's voice. The man was named uh, David Prowse, and he is the guy inside the Darth Vader outfit, but he's not the voice. And so once they finished, I suppose, in the first time, when they were dubbing uh, Vader's dialogue in post-production, his accent was so strongly West Country, which I, you, like I said, I may even, I, I, I was gonna, I, I was gonna play it here, but I thought it, it, it doesn't serve its purpose because we're not talking about him, and no one knows who he actually. It's just we're not, you know what I mean? But I would definitely go find it. It's on YouTube. It's not hard to find. Um, but it was so much that it was unsuitable. Uh, they just like they were just like you know distasteful. Like stop, stop, please, sir. No. Um, but maybe that's maybe that's the thing. That's why Jones went uncredited for the first couple ones because they, I think they were trying to play it off as if it was that guy's voice. Um, but yeah, so uh, James Earl Jones, he would go on to get married to a woman named Julianne Marie. Uh, they met while well, they, they bought performing Othello in 64. They divorced in 72, had no children. Uh, Ten years later, he married a woman named Cecilia Hart. Uh, they had a kid, Flynn Earl Jones. Um, she died of ovarian cancer in 2016. She was also an actress. Um, see, I, I don't know how much I have much because at, at this point, you know, we, we, we kind of know who he is. We were, we're getting up to the 80s. By then, he's kind of James Earl Jones. I mean, he would, he would, like I said, he would be in Sandlot. He would be um, Mufasa in, in, in The Lion King. 
that happened in 1994. Um, he also was the tagline for CNN, and I remember this. I don't know if they still use it, but when I was a kid, this is what you would hear. You'd be like, this is CNN. And I, maybe I always thought I knew it was James Earl Jones in the back of my head, but I never knew it was him. And so it's actually him. He, he did that for a lot of different companies. Um, he did it for Bell Atlantic. He did it for Verizon. Um, he did, he did the, the opening of the 2000 and 2004 Summer Olympics. I mean, people were just like, yo, get this guy. He was he was Morgan Freeman, like I said, before Morgan Freeman was Morgan Freeman. Like I've, been, I've always, if you listen to this podcast, I'm hoping that maybe it's in the cards for me down the road to be the old black guy narrator. I mean, I'm probably, I'm probably 40 years out. If I'm guessing, eh, maybe 30 years out, right? But because he just he handed it to James Earl Jones, handed it off to Morgan Freeman, and I don't know who he's going to hand it off to. It won't be me. I, like I got, there's probably a two or three more handoffs where it can come down to me. But that's the funny thing about it. who's going to be the next old black narrator. Like who is it going to be? It won't be Eddie Murphy. That, that's not going to happen. Um, who would it be? Gosh, I can't. I'm trying to think of old black men right now, and I'm I'm, I'm blinking. Um, but back so back to James Earl Jones's life. Um, he would. Let's see, he would make an appearance as Alex Haley in Roots 2. Uh, I believe it was that. I don't know what year that was. I don't have it in here. He won an Emmy in 91 uh, for his role in Gabriel's Fire. Oh, yeah, I have, I have some famous quotes here, and then we're probably pretty much done. I don't think there's much else to say about James Earl Jones. I've learned a lot. I hope you've learned a lot. This guy, you know, born in Mississippi, moved to Michigan, went to the University of Michigan, uh, graduated Army Ranger, Korean War, uh, well, right after the Korean War, uh, Broadway debut, uh, multiple times on Broadway, Oscar, Tony, Emmy, uh, and the Oscar is an honorary Oscar. If you're wondering, it's not actually for a specific role. He was given an honorary Oscar, I think, in 2011. Uh, but I mean, Oscar, you know, the statue is a statue, right? Uh, yeah, but I, I had some quotes from him that I thought I'm not going to read them all. But the first one I read really gave me pause, but in a good way. Um, it's it's a, he's quote uh, when you wake up in the morning, before you look in the mirror, do you see an ethnicity? I don't. And if I did, I'd be in trouble. Because that, that has blinded me to who I might really be. Even waking up seeing myself as a male blinds me to who I, to who I might really be. End quote. And I read that and I just I thought that's, I mean, the open-mindedness that you must have to, to not only articulate that, but to, to put it in practice in life in any way, shape, or form. I don't think I'm, th- I'm not there. I'm not, I'm so far from there. Because when I wake up, I am, I am a man. I wake up as a, as a black man. I don't, I don't wake it up as, or I don't wake up as if like that's, you know, I don't know. It's you know. It's not like I put that face on. It's just like that's just what it is. But for him to wake up and just be, I guess, just this, just this person, just this blank entity, um, waiting to become something, is uh, it shows people on a different level. You know, some people are on, are, are just on, on a different level. And yeah, I mean, that's probably it for the quotes. And what is he doing now? Uh, the guy's still alive. He's still alive. He's ninety-two years old, I believe. Ninety-two, ninety-three, something like that. Uh, I think the last time he was on stage, could be wrong, uh, was in 2017 with uh, was it something about a plumber. The Night, the night of the Plumber? I think that's what it was called. The Night of the Plumber. Um, they say that may or may not have been his last time because, you know, he's getting too old. I mean, Gene Hackman retired way before that. And that's just a side note that just threw me off like years ago. And it's just like, you had so many more, you know, years, I thought. But you kind of, he's, he's a really good actor. But just, with, I don't know, I'm just going on tangents now. So it's definitely time to go ahead and end the pod. Um, All right, and that's been another episode of Bite Size Bios, BSB. That was number 30 coming at you. Uh, James Earl Jones. Learned a lot about him. I kind of ran it down there in, in, towards the end, just a, just a quick. I mean, if you really are going to sum it up, you know, like I said, guys, born in Mississippi, moves to Michigan, becomes an Army Ranger, gets on Broadway, becomes Darth Vader. I mean, who could, who, 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 who could plan for that? Who could, who could, who could, who could even predict that? Um, you know, but so, yeah. Hope you guys liked it. Definitely got more. Uh, like I said, we're going to start to shift, I think, in, in, in who we cover. Uh, going to maybe, I'm, I'm, you know, you, you never know what's on the horizon. I just know that there's some differences that are coming to Bite Size Bios as well. Just like we changed the old, how did that happen not too uh, long ago. But, yeah, we'll see you guys next week with the next how did that happen. Uh, I don't think there's much else to say. Like, as always, like and subscribe wherever you find this. Five stars if you loved it. Two stars if you didn't. And uh, tell us why you didn't love it uh, because constructive criticism is always welcome. Uh, as always, thank you for pressing play. Uh, week to week, I do appreciate you guys. I, I see the downloads. I see when people are binging, and it actually makes me happy when I see like if there's like a one, you know, you can kind of see it in succession sometimes. And I'm like, man, okay, so someone and someone is finding, someone is finding some something in this, and that's all I want somebody to do is just for it to be there. Let me let me just be your background noise. I'm fine with being the background noise. Uh, but yeah, so uh, thank you all for pressing play. We'll see you next week.
Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to. Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.